Well, today, I sent a tweet out to Cy10 Brukenkate and said, hey, we're going to be covering your stuff. This is your invitation. And he's agreed to call in. So he, he's on hold with us right now. Um, so I want to bring him on specifically to talk about presuppositional apologetics. Ladies and gentlemen, Cy10 Brukenkate. Hello, Cy. How are Hello. you, sir? How's it going? Thanks hey, for having me on. Hey, no problem. Um, Christian, won't call into your show. You got to be kidding. Not, exactly. not usually. Not usually. Um, hmm. But I mean, occasionally. I mean, you know, sometimes they do. Uh, we have a lot of Christian guests on, but never just I'm, random Christian callers. Never just that. I'm not a random Christian caller either. No, you're you not. Tweeted me. Right? That's true. That's right. I tweeted you, so you're officially a guest. Um, give us a, a brief definition of presuppositional apologetic, because that's really what I what I want to talk to you about. Not necessarily the existence or non-existence of of the Christian God, but right. specifically presuppositional apologetics. Let's talk about it. Tell us what it is. Well, the best way for me to describe it would be to contrast the difference differences in apologetic approaches. Most Christians, when somebody comes up to them and they deny the existence, somebody denies the existence of God, they respond with evidences. They give the person evidences to conclude that God exists. And what I say is, where do you hear evidences most often in the secular world? You hear it in the court of law. I say, who do you give evidence to in the court of law? You give it to the judge and the jury. So if somebody comes up to me and asks, says they don't believe in God, and I give them evidence, what I'm in effect saying is that they are the judge and the jury, and that God is on trial. Right. But Scripture says that everybody knows that God exists. So rather than make the unbeliever the judge, I expose the fact that they do know that God exists by exposing that the presuppositions necessary for rationality, for rational interchange, for rational exchange, actually presuppose the Christian worldview. So what I'm saying is everybody knows that God exists. In order to do a podcast like you're doing and the things that you discuss, they don't make sense according to an atheistic worldview. So the presuppositions, what it comes right down to is it's the beliefs that we have before we get to the evidence. It's our pre-beliefs, our presuppositions. And what I as a presuppositionist do is I show, I expose the fact that atheist presuppositions cannot account for rationality. Okay, so fair enough. Um, so someone born and parents are atheist, they raise them atheist, never go to church, and they firmly st state that they don't, they don't believe in God at all. You're saying that they do because it doesn't make sense not to? So I'm a science person, I'm so I'm trying to understand. Yeah, so. well, what I'm saying, for instance, is that um, in, in the Bible it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. All the, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Jesus Christ. So when... I, I'm saying that it's innate knowledge that people have of God, and they expose this knowledge of God when they make knowledge claims, when they try and um, right. behave rationally in this world because they cannot make sense of it without him. Now, I'm not saying that these people have to profess that God exists in order to be rational. So but, let, me, let me just But what clarify. it comes down to is the fundamental assumption is that they must know that God exists in order to account for rationality. Okay, so let me, let me clarify. You're, you're saying that if a, her, her direct question was, you've got an atheist parent who has, an, who has right. a child, never talks to the child about God at all. The child right. is raised and becomes an adult at some point. You think that that person at 12 years old, because the Bible says that all people know that God exists, that 12-year-old right. automatically, innately knows that God exists, even though that 12-year-old yeah. has never been taught about it? That's right. Well, look, I, yeah, that, that's our position. Now, let me explain that all Christians actually believe this, but even evidentialists don't understand this. They don't understand that they believe this, because let's say, for instance, that that 12-year-old does not know that God exists. It would follow logically that they would have an excuse when they stand before him. Would you not agree with that? I'm sorry, if, say if that a person again? Really doesn't, if a, really, a person really does not know that God exists, would it not follow logically that they could stand before God and say, look, I just didn't know? Well, it's not just they don't know. I mean, there's if there's you're no an concept atheist, of you it. don't have yeah. a concept. And no, so... no, but, but the thing is, would it not follow logically if the person did not know that God exists, had no concept of God, if he existed, and they stood before him, know. and God says, well, I'm going to send you to hell for not believing in me? Would that not, that wouldn't make sense. No, You're right. It doesn't make sense that a God would damn right. somebody that, for that not, not believing in them. That's, well, well, that's the part that doesn't make sense. A fact, by the it, way, I need to bring up, a fact is a demonstrable area of data that has measurable accuracy. You can verify that it actually exists. You made a fact that was an assertion based on a book that we know is wrong. And to tell me that I know what I know I don't know, and you are pretending to know what you know you don't know. Ignorance and arrogance. This is what this guy gets. Are you going to let me finish? Yeah. Go ahead. 
Okay, so what I'm saying is that if this person really does not know that God exists, then witnessing to them would be the worst thing that we could do for them. Because then we'd be telling them about God, they can deny him, and know they can go to hell forever. But the point is, God does not send people to hell for denying what they don't know. He sends them to hell for their sin against the God they do know. Now, Aaron is talking about rationality and logic. And I, I was on a show with Aaron where he just screamed at the top of his lungs. It's interesting that you say on your tweet that you want to be a presuppositional apologist, that just put your finger in your ears, close your eyes, and scream. That's what I well, said. Well, that's what Aaron was doing on this last show. And that's what happens. They try and shout over the Christian, because I can easily expose the folly of Aaron's worldview. Because one of the things he said is, you know, you send your kids to church, and you ask them, did they tell you anything that was true? And my question for Aaron, and I asked him on the show too, is what is truth according to your worldview? And he cannot justify truth without God. Okay, well, hold on. But so so let me let me explain my tweet that, that you brought up. What I said was, yeah, if you want to be a presuppositional apologist, I said, put your fingers in your ears, close your eyes, and just scream, I'm the boss because the boss said so. What I mean right. by that is, your video, when you were describing presuppositional apologetics, you said, I'm not going to offer evidences to the atheist because the atheist can't understand truth until he first repents. So in your order of things, I must first repent, repent for my sins, why do you have sins in the first place? Well, hold on. That's the point. His, his argument is that you first repent for your sins, and once you repent, then you can be revealed the truth. But you cannot understand the truth. So that's, that's, my, that's my point, is that you, you, you're saying that you do not argue evidences. You won't provide right. evidence because you're not an evidential apologist. And what that means right. is you will not provide evidence because if you provide evidence to right. an atheist, you're putting God on trial and making the atheist the judge. Not right. only that, but you can be forgiven for absolutely every sin you do except one, which is well, disbelief, problem, problem which is. means that the Bible expresses that it is possible to not believe. The fallacy is that you say that I put my fingers in my ears and I refuse to discuss things. I don't. What I'm saying is that the debate is not at the level of evidence, because we will all examine evidence according to our respective presuppositions. Okay, and that's fine. The debate Unless is not you don't at the level of evidence. The debate is at the level of presuppositions. Except now, if you're I'm like me and again, don't and have we'll see presuppositions. We'll see if Aaron answers this question by the time we get to the end of the show. What is truth, and how can you know anything to be true according to your worldview? What is true, and how do we know anything to be true? You're asking me? Yeah, I'm, I'm letting what you answer. What is true? Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Go ahead. Or what you, whatever you can verify objectively through evidence. Truth okay. is whatever we can determine to be true. Okay. I, whatever I, we I, can I, show I to be true. Something as an ignorant. Well, hold on. I, when, you get a, when you get somebody on stand, like he was talking about in the court, you know, you, and they swear that they're going to tell the truth, well, you don't automatically assume that whatever they say is the truth because they swore that they were going to tell the truth. Right. It becomes the job of the court to determine whether or not that is the truth. And, of course, the, what is the deciding factor is whether they can determine that the statements made are true. So when you verify that it is true, then it becomes true. So truth is whatever we can show to be true. And if you can't show it to be true, then it's not truth. So but sign, you can't be revealed right. the truth until you repent sins, right? Right. You have to repent but first, and then you how can... How can you sin? Well, the thing is, uh, Aaron was begging the question with his definition. But quite basically, he has a correspondence theory of truth. His theory of truth is truth is whatever is real. And I asked him this question on the Magic Sandwich Show. I said, how do you know what's real according to your worldview? And I would love for him to answer that question. I just did. And it, even, if you, don't, even if you it's don't, it's what you can demonstrate. It. As I told you on the magic sandwich, and as I told Eric on the field when he lied and said that I didn't say that, even if this is the brain in a vat kind of thing, if we're all living in a computer enhanced hallucination like the Matrix, it wouldn't matter if this is all a dream of Brahma. Because the reality has laws which apply to us. And so the reality is still real from our perspective, even if reality wasn't real at all. Which, of course, it has to be. Arguing that reality isn't real is moot and ridiculous. So reality has to be real, at least from our perspective. And we have to take that it must be real beyond that. The laws apply to us. The laws of this physical universe apply to us. We have to obey them, whether they're real or not. So, so, Sai, Sai, you, you, you claim that you claim to have you claim to have knowledge, you claim to have absolute knowledge of truth because God revealed it to you, right? And I can't have that, right? Right, Sai. No, I, I'm not saying. That. I'm saying that I can know some things for certain to be true, just as you do, because you except all know that, that you God don't. Exists. You say things that I know are not true, and you say they okay. are true. How does he, well, if, how do you know if I want to, if I'm going to engage Aaron, let me respond to what he said about what truth was. He said he didn't know what's real. 
He said I didn't say that. I did not no, say that. Sorry, he didn't say I that. I said the opposite okay, which reality, of that. Which reality is real, Aaron? The reality which is one? real. What are the options? Hindus say all is maya, all is illusion. I don't understand. Which one is real? They say all is one. How come that one's not real? Because they're, neither of those are real. The reality well, is real. They not, don't have demonstrable not evidence. Hindu beliefs, okay. Not Hindu beliefs. Okay. But people have different concepts of reality. How do you know you have the right one? Where is there an option? There is the one that we can measure and test, and then what is the other one? Or what is what? an the, other the one? Hindus, for instance, will say all is one, all is Maya. Except that, that there's one and, truth and, and only one right. that so can me... be measured. Right. If it can't be measured, it isn't real. So everyone okay, else now... has these. Everyone else has these these uh, assertions that they make about their particular view on reality. And what we're saying is, Sai, that if you if if you cannot measure or demonstrably test something, it does not fit into reality. Okay, it now, here's the problem with that. Real. Here's the problem with that, because you people are reasoning about what you think is the right reality, but you cannot justify your reasoning. I don't to have to justify can? my reasoning. Why can't, okay, why can Aaron, you and I can't? Would right. you agree that there are people in this world who are unable to reason rationally? Yes, and how do we determine that? Okay, well, let me finish. Let me finish my analogy. We you, determine you that by people that who are, can reason rationally. And they can confirm finish. with each other when they can reason rationally. They have means of communication and, more importantly, verification. They can measure it. It's real. They can check their measurements. I can check their measurements to show that it's real. When the Hindu comes up and tells me what a hallucination is, they tell me whatever their reality is. I want to measure it. How do you know it? If they can't show it, they don't know it. You can't show it. You don't know it. All you do is assert your assumption and affirm your conviction. That's it. Okay, back to my point. You have admitted that there's people in this world who cannot reason rationally. I'm talking to one. <laughs> okay. Yes. That being the case, would you not require rational reasoning in order to determine that you are one of those people? Not my own. And that's why your argument breaks down. It's not so. No, okay. So you admit that there are people in this world who, who cannot reason rationally. Of... Yes, and, and, and can and measure... And it follows logically that you would need rational reasoning to determine if you were or if you are we not one of those definitions. people. So my question to you, we Aaron, is how do you know you're not one of those people? Because we have definitions and we have measurements. We have and the evidence challenge, the and challenge goes objective process. means of determining things that do not depend on our worldview. Right, and Sai, okay. hold on, Sai, hold on. Yeah. And it goes, the, the same question could be posed back to you to say how and, do, and how I'd do you... And I'd be happy to answer Okay, it, how, do you know, how do you know the truth... Well, it has not been answered yet. Okay, well, hold on. My, my question would be, how would you know that the truth that has been revealed to you, the truth that you understand it, or the logic or reason or the reality that you understand it as it is, is not really driven by Satan to fool you into following him? How do you know that the God that you're following and the God that has revealed this to you is not actually evil and that Allah is the one true God? Right, and I'll be happy to answer that question as soon as we get back to my point. That was talked over. I'd be happy to go there. I don't mind doing that. But you're saying, you're talking about putting their fingers in their ears and yelling, but that's not the case. See, I can't even get a rational answer. People keep going on and on and on. You've never Let's started the point. a rational answer. There are people in this world who Aaron admitted cannot reason rationally. And he's saying that the way that they would determine that they're not such a person is by reasoning rationally. No, I didn't. And if you cannot see the illogic no, there, he the didn't illogic say that. of such but that's a not what I no said. point in continuing. But, there, there is no point in continuing. Sorry. I'm going to twist everything that I said. Remember when I said okay, that Eric well, lied about well, what I actually you said? Why don't you're, you lying, how a person you're lying about what I actually said. You're lying about what I actually said. We have measurements. We have objective criteria. We have evidence that can be taken by machines and analyzed. It doesn't depend on our worldview. Eric, stop there. So... What he's saying is we have measurements, we have scientific measurements. Right. We, we don't just rely on our own logic, our own ideas, our own reason. We have measurements and scientific data. Here is the question again. How could a person who could not reason rationally know that they were not such a person or know that they were such a person? Would you not admit that they could not know if their reason was irrational? Depends on how extreme the condition is. Then well, even if they couldn't, if they then could not doing... reason, if they were in, if, if they had an inability to come to logical conclusions, then they can't communicate. Would you admit that such people exist? 
Those people I think could we not can know that they were such people. On a, a scale. That? No, okay. We don't so, have a dichotomy. We have a sliding scale. Right. And, and how do you know that you're about, not one of those people? What it's you're a talking very about, simple question. What you're talking about is all the way down on a scale where they can't even it's communicate. It's a very simple question. And I answer yes it. or no. No, it's, it's not, not a just yes, a yes or, or no. no. It's a very simple question, but the answer is not yes or no. So how do you know you're not one of those people, Cy? That's what I'm asking you guys. And that's what I'm asking you. Answer the question. But you, you won't answer the question. That. We just we said it. We did, repeatedly. We... No, you didn't. Yes. You're not, you're not answering the question. We can be analyzed whether by people or by machines, according to evidence, according to chemicals in our brains. We can be evaluated according to all the criteria required, according to tests that can be run on our psychology, on our ability to reason and rationalize. We can estimate data. We can communicate. We have many different tests by which we can confirm solidly. And one thing that we absolutely need to get rid of if we want to make sure that we are objective in our analysis is faith. Aaron? If you were a person who could not reason to rational conclusions, could you know that you were such a person? Yes. You could? Yes. How? With rational, with rational reasoning, correct? With measurements. Yes. Yes. Which you, which you evaluate with rational reasoning, correct? No. No, you evaluate I don't with have data. To, I don't have to understand it. If I'm incapable of reasoning, then I'm, well, again, we're trying to draw a dichotomy, Probably which it isn't. Probably be in a mental hospital. Right, but... because he's talking about people being sane and people being insane and, and that there's nothing in between. Everybody is neurotic to some I'm degree. I'm not saying that there's nothing in between. I'm asking a simple question. If you're a person who is unable to reason rationally, could at you all. know it? Literally at all. Right. Okay, so he's talking about a vegetable. So a vegetable. Someone who yeah. is completely irrational and unable to could comprehend. Could you know it? Yeah, could, someone could in a know. coma probably And then we're supposed to it. say, no, we wouldn't know the difference. And then he's going to say, ha-ha, how do you know that you're not one of those people? Exactly. Right, because, right, because we're able to communicate. Will not answer the question. Right. I answered the question. I'm going to answer the question again. Because we can communicate means that we possess okay. this ability that the person that you're using in your hypothetical example does not have. But Aaron, that presupposes rationality. That doesn't presuppose anything. Okay, so now that we've answered the question, now that we've answered the question, reason you can't talk. Now that we've answered the question, side. Can you give me an example of every conversation if your reason was not rational? Hold on a second. What? Hold on a second. I I might believe things on faith. That's the first thing. That's the first indication. You have people who believe. Give me an example of a conclusion you could come to if your reason was not rational. No. Yes. No. Faith. Stop. Everybody, stop. No. I'm not giving you anything until you answer the question because we answered well, the question. We answered the question. I keep answering it. We answered it. the question, and now I want you to answer. Okay. It. I don't well, let's know recap, that and then I'll answer reasonable. the question. Let's recap. Okay. 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 Conclusion okay. that you would come to if you I, if you were not Aaron. able if you were not able to reason, what would be a, clu- a conclusion that you would come to? Faith. The belief well, that if you believe right. something hard enough, that reality will somehow change. That you can you wish things to that happen. You, that you can reason rationally on faith. What? You believe that you can reason rationally on faith. No, no. I don't have faith. I'm an epistivist. Faith is the <laughs> most dishonest position it is possible to have, and that's why I reject it. Okay. I because faith is inherently flawed because it causes you to believe things that are not true. It is an assertion of absolute conviction, which is never wise. And at any time you assert something on as fact that is not evidently true, that is dishonest. So your, your, your position is neither wise nor honest. If I say problem, that I am unable to know, when you justify know, your reasoning with your reasoning, you're stating except that I don't on. do that. I want Rachel to say something. Go ahead. I don't Rachel. ever talk about this stuff. I know, but I'm ahead. trying to go with this question. If I say that in some sort of weird world where people are not actually accountable to what they say or actually watched by the scientific community when they actually make big claims, if I say that I am unable to know if I'm rational or not. Or I have reason. Then how would you know? Then how no. could you know? What's the difference between me? Well, the problem is he doesn't know. That's what we want to ask him. How do but you he know? Yes, he does. Sorry. So we want to know why. And I'll be happy to. I'll be happy to answer. And I said I would answer, but I'm going to recap first. Oh. What I said was, I asked Aaron. Recap means twist it, our words to make us say something. No, no. We didn't well, say. If, if this is wrong, then you can correct that. But I asked him if there is. Are there such people in this world who cannot reason rationally? And I said, how would you know that you're not such a person? And he gave me all these examples that would, cro- that would require rational reasoning. Wrong. And if you're happy Wrong. with that, I'm happy to go on. Now you can ask your question. Wrong. No, we that said is sci- not what I said. We said scientific data. We said no, regardless of scientific, scientific data that could be we scientific s- data that could be evaluated by machines. It has absolutely nothing to do with your worldview. How do you know that you're, that you're rational, though? Because if you're not of capable your... of rational... 
if you're not capable analysis. of being rational, then you would probably be our guest on the show there tonight. But that's the fallacy of irrelevant thesis. I'm asking how you know you're rational. Okay, so now we're asking you, how do you know that you have the ability to come to logical conclusions? And bear in mind, oh, public, so close. You can go to the bear public mind, school and take a math test and okay. have to verify yourself. Yeah, you yeah. can take you can take multiple psychological tests. People you can, can take tests on reason. You can take watch remember, you. Right. knowledge differs from mere belief in that knowledge is demonstrable with measurable accuracy. If you can't show it, you don't know it. The problem is, Aaron, that you employ your reasoning to do that, and you cannot justify the validity of your reasoning. I can. And how do you justify yours? And I've you, got the a only... definition of the word, and I can show that it is correct. You not if you're misused. Reasoning is valid, Aaron. You are using the word knowledge inappropriately. It doesn't match the definition. We can't reason with you. How do you know your reasoning about that is valid? It's How not reasoning as a definition. There's no reasoning necessary. If you can oh, okay. show so the data, you're irrational verify, when it comes to definitions. No I don't have to be Fine. irrational. There doesn't have to be <laughs> rationality wow. put into the definition of the word. Does it fit the definition or does it not? Oh, I don't okay. have to rationalize so you it. Don't, you don't need to reason about definitions? I'm not making the definition it's up. I don't need to reason it. Right. So we have you don't a, need to reason about definitions. Wow. We have a definition of the speak, word. Yes. Do right. you have knowledge as it is defined, or do you have a belief that you were trying to dress up as knowledge? The My vibe. question is, how do you know your reasoning about that definition is valid? And my answer is because, because there's a definition of the word, and I'm using the definition correctly. Communication happens. Well, I, I trust that papers. the people listening to this show can see the absurdity of that position. I'm sure because they can see the absurdity of these positions. <laughs> yes, Sai, I don't think you have you have yet to answer a single I question. I have. That's right, because we haven't got a clear answer from Aaron. But I'll we help. got I a clear answer. answer. It's just not the one that you oh. want to set up your you little said. dominoes for. No, that's fine. It's because I'm giving the right answer. Answer that question because it exposes the folly of your views. It it does expose the folly of your views. When you can claim to know things that you can't show because you assert as fact things which are not evidently true and because you twist every time we answer the question, you say we haven't answered it because we haven't given you the wrong answer that you you depend on for your little game. This is well, exactly the thing right. is, if you say that you do not employ your reasoning to justify your reasoning, then you do it some other way. And I've right. not we heard have yet definitions how you do that without employing your reasoning. What you have heard is that we have definitions and we have physical evidence. Let me we can show here. what the word means. We use it appropriately. You can't meet that appropriate definition, and that gives you no room to play, so you have to create another word game so that you can come out of this feeling like you did okay. Did you employ your reasoning in that last statement? <laughs> yes, did you? Apparently not. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, well, you employed your reasoning. Just I, I tell you. Reasoning. Hold this, on. So I, rest my case. I do not justify my reasoning with him my reasoning. Do this to me. Okay, how do you do it then? Okay, hold on. No, this is I it's have the de- with, Okay, this it continues like let, this. No, we let me show take... it, it's objective Aaron, evidence. Aaron, it's objectively Aaron. verifiable. He's okay. getting red. It's according to the Without definition. Blue. And he keeps trying to change it because he can't. He has to. His game is so frail. So let me, it requires let me the word game that doesn't use the right definitions. Sigh. Listen to me for a second. Knowledge is something you can demonstrate. That's the definition of it. No, it's not. Knowledge is justified true belief. Right, justified. Justified. Right. So it means you can demonstrate it. If you can justify it. Yeah, but that's not the definition of knowledge. That's a, the constituent of but knowledge. That's what you just told me was then the definition of it. Let me finish no, my question. That was the definition. Let me finish my question. Justification is only a constituent of knowledge. It's not the whole thing. Why is it that you can claim to know something based on your faith in your version of God? And other Christians, other believers, also claim to know things because of their relationship with God, yet they disagree with you. How do we know which believer has been revealed the truth? Well, the thing is, it's irrelevant to argue differences. What we're talking is about the possibility of truth. And I'm saying that without God, you cannot have a possibility of truth or not. But two people, hold on, but two people claim to have the same God, yet disagree about truth. How do you explain that? well, it depends on what the what the issue is, and that's the kind of thing we discuss in a Bible study for people that can justify truth and knowledge. But knowledge not is knowledge. If you can't demonstrate it, if you can't demonstrate it, it's not it's not going to be justifiable knowledge. We're not going to. Yes, you have admitted this. that you don't know if you live in the right reality. There could no, be a reality I did where not. there's a God, correct? I did not admit that. I said the exact opposite. The same thing Eric Hoven did at the Reason Rally. He told me I said the opposite thing. Yeah. I did not say that. I said the very opposite of that. So here's here's the definition. I, I suppose— because well, you said you could be a brain in a fat, so obviously no, you I don't said know which reality you're in. No, I said even if 
I said, even if. I said it was a moot philosophical point that didn't make any sense. There are some philosophers that argue that, and I said I reject it because it's a silly argument. To pretend that reality isn't real is to throw away the definition. The definition of no. reality is that it is real. It's stupid to argue the other. That's what I said. So, yes, I know reality is real, and you're going to turn around right now and say, how do you know your reasoning is right? right, right, right. And it, it, just right, because it because doesn't make any sense. I did answer, and I could answer you all day, and it could be the same answer again and again and again. You're right. You're never going to accept it because it doesn't no. fit the card game that I'm you're trying to play. I'm very pleased that you repeat your answer you on said it, I'm you very said it very well, repeat your answer because it's absurd. You said it very well, Lauren. How is it absurd? I don't I didn't follow that. Because he's using his reasoning to justify his reasoning. Except that that's saying, I'm not, not I'm what I'm doing because I'm right. using the definitions we all and know I right. have evidence. And we, so we all know right. I'm not. To evaluate right. those definitions I'm not to using my reasoning on this. We know that you're not. Aaron, do you use let, your reasoning to understand and evaluate those definitions? Well, I don't have to game. understand and evaluate yeah. the definitions. So let oh, him okay. answer a single thanks, question. Thanks a it's very, It's very simple, straightforward. Do you have a way of demonstrating your knowledge or not. You just did. I didn't. You <laughs> asked me for a word game. Here it is. What I'm saying is that God is a necessary precondition for rationality. Except that it's impossible by physical standards. You cannot have rationality without God. But you do have rationality, which exposes the fact that you know that God exists. Except that I know that and God does not exist, and I know that the Bible is wrong, repent, so and that I don't, ra I don't use or rationality to run. Nah. You what? should take his headphones off. He's right. Taking my head. I don't know why we're talking to this guy. Well, I I want to let him finish. Learn about what I want to let is. him finish. Let him finish his whole thing. He can sound ridiculous all by himself. Go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah, Ty. that's true. No, I'm, I'm done. Go ahead. No, you haven't answered any of our questions yet. It's your turn. We've okay, been well, so well, far. Well, so far, our definition of truth, knowledge, reality, and logic rationale has been on trial. Now we want to know how you have all of these things that we aren't privy to. The same way you do, by in revelation from God. Except that that's not how we do, God. and that's not how you do either. That's how, do you how you know? would... how do you your reasoning about that as well. So when you say reference... Because you're not using reasoning. Every time you talk... How do you know that? Every time you talk, he's just going to say, how do you know that? How do you know that? And he's not going right. to... He's going to avoid the question. No, I've answered the question. By no, a revelation from God. That's so you're saying by you revelation of God. Rev okay, Which so here's God? an example. Which God? No, we brought There's this up on the magic sandwich. Which God? up on the magic sandwich. There's only one. Zuchobara. Well, hold on. But there have been people who said they had... There are people who have said they have truth revealed to them from Krishna. Irrelevant. There's people that have counterfeit money. doesn't mean there's no real money. So they, they, they are worshiping a false god? That's correct. They say the same about you. That's fine. People say that, you know, so the only way to make sure that the real money doesn't mean that there's no real money. The only way and to I'd make sure that you're atheist, not the problem is leaving that when we come on an atheist show, they posit other deities rather than justify their own worldview. What about something outside Except of that the I deity? did justify my own worldview, and you turned yes, and around and, and, and said I'm that I did I'm glad that you did, Aaron, that you don't use your reasoning to validate your reasoning, and then you Thank give you. me reasons. I appreciate that. Thank you very that much. But I use Let's definitions, and I use evidence. Yeah, I know. I don't use circular reasoning. you don't use your reasoning for. it's my time. I will end this damn show. Oh, Let's ahead, Rachel, sorry. stay on topic and not to talk over each other. Me. Let's let him let him get his answer out. I I want to know how you know you have truth and how another believer tells me they have truth. How do you know you're not worshiping a false god and that someone else in fact has the real truth? I, my my epistemological answers will always be the same. What I know, I know by and through revelation from God. If people claim another deity, I'll be happy to engage them okay. in debate. Here's a better. And how do you know about God? No, so wait, 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 wait. This is Molly, what I've been waiting this on this important. since I saw his video. Go ahead. By his revelation, God his, makes us know through the Bible. Many ways. Because you you said in your scripture. you said in your video and you and you're trying to catch Aaron Aaron now, which is 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 invalid, but. Uh, you're saying that he said things he didn't say, to be fair, Cy. You are. He's not saying these well, things, but you're putting words okay, into his you mouth. Know, I don't mind admitting that. If he says that he knows that he's living in the right reality, that's fine. Nope, let me finish. And then I apologize for that mischaracterization, <laughs> okay, but when he thinks you. a hypothetical so anyway, that could be brains and vats, he did not He, he know, said if. That he didn't say there could be. He, discounting that as a, he said if that was the case, here is another answer to that. He didn't say that, in fact, was the case. So, you know, so what I'm talking about here— so I apologize I thought that when he said we could be brains and vats— I thought that he was giving that as another possibility. No. Moving on. But Thank if he's you. absolutely certain that we live in the right reality, you know, then, then I ask him to justify his reasoning he said about if. in this reality, which he can't do. He which said I did, did do, and I said because the, the laws of this reality still Mutant. apply to us, yeah. and they apply to you, and you can't deny them. I can deny your God so you because it's made up. you believe in laws of logic, up. Aaron? I, 
He's just engaging. He's baiting you, it's and you're another, taking the bait. Don't take the bait. Word game. Just don't take the bait. Just Go ahead. You believe in the laws of logic. It's time for so you to answer the question. Let me clarify your question, Smalley, because okay. he doesn't understand where it is you're getting. He's going to try to get some other bait out of it. Sir Isaac Newton. I brought this up on Magic City. <coughs> Sir Isaac Newton, uh, most brilliant man in history, argued by many, has was also a very staunch Christian, and he believed that he that he had been given special revelation from God. He was specially chosen for divine revelation okay. beyond the normal human understanding of the scriptures. He was divinely chosen for special revelation from God, and he was shown these revelations through God in such a way that he could know it to be true for certain. The problem is, is he disagrees with Saitan Brueggengate, not on which God it is, but on the type of divinity it is. He showed uh, that Jesus and Yahweh were different entities, whereas Saitan believes that they're the same. Right. Now, how do you show which one is correct? Because obviously, law of non-contradiction, they can't both be correct. Right. Oh, so right. you believe in the law of non-contradiction? Of course. So how do we know? Why does it necessarily apply? No, don't, no, don't, don't avoid the question. You're avoiding the question. The point is, how do we no. know that your, I'll your truth? Question, but, but the thing is, no, answer it now. Answer, answer it now. Answer it now. Now. Answer it now. How well, do you know? I'll, I'll no, answer it, but no. Let me answer it now. You're in an argument with Sir Isaac Newton. He says Jesus is not God. Right. You say Jesus is God. How do we determine right. which of you is correct? With if either of you. With Scripture. Okay, that's Does how it we have to be with, with scripture? scripture? Now, my question is... But wait, this isn't from Scripture. Isaac Newton used the same excuse you did. Revelation from God, not storybook. Right. Revelation from God. How do we know which revelation is, is factual? With Scripture. But okay, the Scripture let's, let's was written by guys from Revelation from God. So where did their revelation from God come from if they didn't have the Scripture? Well, I believe that the canon is closed. But let's, they let wrote it question. with... How did they write did it? Did you hear that? His claim on knowledge went back to his belief. I believe. Yeah. So, so you don't that. have. Yeah, so you you just did, Sai. You said I believe I said the canon is the closed. Can, you said I believe the canon is closed. Well, the canon is closed. That's why. Yeah, position. but how did they write it? They wrote it with, according to you, revelation Three from God. Inspiration from right? God. All right. So right. there was revelation from God before there was scripture. And right? I would argue with Isaac Newton as to whether that kind of revelation. Yes or no? Occurs. Was there revelation from the God? Problem. Was there revelation from God before there was scripture? Yes, it was. So how do you determine whose revelation from God is correct? And why do we have all these books that are no longer in your Scripture that have been thrown out? You determine it by Scripture. How do we okay, have now, Scripture referring to Scriptures that have since been thrown out if the Scriptures refer to it? Why would God make a reference to books that were written by some human author and then throw them out but still refer to them in other chapters? Well... I can explain to you the canonicity of Scripture, but that's not what this debate is about. No, you cannot explain that. You can't explain sure anything. Can. You also can't <laughs> tell me how we would be able to tell or how you would be able to tell between you and Isaac Newton. How do you convince Newton that you're right? Well, how I does Newton the question. No, you didn't. Right back to you no, you didn't. Well, you don't like no, my no you didn't. Hold on, guys. Newton, si, all you Newton said... chooses Scripture also Hi. as well as revelation from God. No, you, you said both he argue? used extra-biblical revelation. That's what you he said. He had divine revelation direct right. from God. He was specially chosen. Right. God extra-biblical cho revelation. Right. Extra-biblical okay. right. revelation. Right. Right. Nobody's going to gonna listen to me. I'm ending the show. So, I'll end the entire show. So God tells Newton that he's okay. right and Saitan is wrong. Now what? You want the answer? Yeah. You can't just you say scripture. You can't just say scripture. His was an extra-biblical revelation. Right. And what I'm saying is that I determined that through Scripture. Now, my question is, and this is what I was going to bring up, is that you said that there was a problem because there was a contradiction. And my question to you is why are contradictions absolutely not allowed? I think you're changing the subject. If, if, uh, Sir I'm Isaac saying Newton, that your question presupposes my worldview. No, it doesn't. It's irrelevant. Okay, then how do you account for absolute laws of logic? You're changing the subject again. Answer get the back question. on the subject and okay, get you back might as well to answer the, the question. You're, no, I'm not avoiding. You are. Sir Isaac Newton gets direct revelation from God to the effect where right. God, tells him, God tells him directly that Jesus is not God. I and deny that. Here, here, yeah, I know. Little, you deny guys. direct revelation from God. All right. Listen, um, Aaron, I want to give you 60 seconds. No, I don't need it. Yeah, you do. No, 60 know. seconds There's to, no fr to frame to your question, guy. give 60 seconds to frame your question, and then promise me you will I'm have done. 60 seconds of silence for him to answer because I, I want him did. to answer. I asked the question, he answered it. It's over. What's your answer, Sai? How do we know that you are telling the truth versus Sir Isaac Newton? Scripture. Well, that doesn't make sense. That, that, 
that question is answered through Scripture, because Aaron admitted that Isaac Newton's revelation was extra-biblical, and I deny those type of revelations which contradict Extra-biblical meaning direct from God himself. That's right, extra-biblical, And you that's correct. argued, which, see, this is the problem, Saiten doesn't worship a god, he worships a book. No, so what if somebody was worshiping the same extra book? Extra-biblical, but, but direct from God. And, oh, I and, deny that claim. And you have to look up what he said specifically, because he's finding it in no, Scripture. No, uh, yeah, because Newton, okay, so Newton thanks, argues thanks that for God us. showed it Read in the Hebrews Scripture. One. That type of revelation doesn't occur anymore. But the point is... Then why do you claim it? You don't have any way I to demonstrate it. I don't claim extra-biblical revelation, but what I'm saying is... You, when do you, cla- up, you do say that God has revealed it to you in such a way that you could know it for certain. It's exactly right. what Newton said. Can I have 60 seconds to play the game? But the yeah. thing is, wh- the, the, thing is the revelation is in Scripture. His is extra-biblical. Right. But the problem is you bring up a contradiction. You cannot justify a problem with contradiction in your world. Okay, I want to play the game. Go ahead, Rachel. Rachel, you're going to talk okay, directly with Okay, we're going to start from the beginning. And since I don't know all of this stuff and I'm pretty chill... Yep. Just start from the beginning of the first question. Okay. Ask so, so Rachel's going to play along. She's going to answer your question. Start with her. Go ahead. I want to see where right. it leads. Rachel, could you be wrong about everything you claim to know? Everyone could be. Okay. Now, now I'm going to explain the problem with that. About because everything? Admit oh, that you know, it's please. my time. Uh, my show. Can't be wrong Go ahead. Go ahead. If you could admit that you could I'm be wrong about everything, then you can't say what I can be wrong about. I want to see your what, very what next thing out of your mouth is a knowledge claim about me. You say everybody could, but that's a knowledge claim, and that's self-refuting. Okay, then then what is your response to that? If I if I say I believe that all people could be wrong, including you. Well, what I what I would say is you have just exposed your options, what, Jesus what Christ or absurdity. But you'll probably choose absurdity because you love your sin, and I urge you to repent. Okay, that made no sense at all. Well, um, that's fine, but you you understand that your position is an absurd position when you say everybody could be wrong about everything because that's a knowledge claim. No, I don't think everyone total can be wrong about every single thing. I think everyone has the possibility to be wrong about something because we okay, are not Okay, but my question is, can you be wrong about everything you claim to know? And you said, yes, everyone could. Yeah, he said, are you wrong And that's about an absurd everything. contradiction. Could you be? Could I be? So everything. you're saying, could I be completely insane and irrational and be wrong about everything and I'm in a delusion? Yes, well, basically, could you be wrong about everything? But, you your answer, yes. but your answer, Rachel, was a good one, because you didn't just say yes or no. You said everyone could be. And when you say everyone could be wrong, you're not saying that you know everyone is, nor that you know everyone is not, but you're also including the fact that this presuppositional apologist who has this little trap to play with you could also, in fact, be wrong. And his only assertion so that he's we, right is God. We're all the God. same species, and we could all be literally insane, missing a couple lobes, and everyone could is a self-refuting knowledge claim. That's the problem, though. Explain. Okay, I'll, I'll give you this example. When I say, could you be wrong about everything? Your answer is yes, but everybody could. Is that fair? No. no everybody could be wrong about answer. something. I'm, kill- I'm playing a game. That's, it's okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking game. Rachel. She said everybody could. I'm just answering so, randomly. <laughs> okay, just just to make sure that I'm not mischaracterizing what you're saying. Is no, your okay. answer like, basically, the things I'm saying when I say you could be wrong. But I could be wrong. Do I know it? If he can verify that the speed limit outside says 30, the cop then would he knows verify it. the fact what that he's saying, go over, what he's which saying you is if have he says if he so admits you're not the going to be wrong. What he's saying is if he admits the ability of being wrong, does he still know it? Is that the essence of this? The essence of this is My for you to is say if I could be wrong, do I know it? Then you don't know anything because you don't you don't have God. Yeah, but you can verify the speed limit. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say is, though that's not my question. A possi- my question there's a possibility of being say- completely irrational, you will be checked by the system that we live in, in which will tell you that you are being irrational by getting a ticket or getting arrested. Not my question. My question is, is if I say that the speed of the road is 30 miles per hour, but I could be wrong, do I know it? You wanted to play the game, Rachel. No, I, yeah, I know. I'm playing the game. I'm trying to think if I say the speed is 30, but I could be wrong, do I know it? You think the speed is 30. If he says, I think it's 30, but I don't know, but I could be wrong. No. If, if you admit that you could be wrong, that it is a belief and not knowledge. Then it's then you don't know. Correct. Then you Correct. Don't know. Yeah, that's why if I don't un- understand okay. something, well, let me never finish assume. Now. So okay. it's a belief, it's not knowledge. So if you say you could be wrong about everything, it follows that you know nothing. No, I, I'm not saying that I, as an individual, has a possibility of being completely irrational right now. I think that our species has the ability to be 
randomly one individual in a society completely irrational but people living in a society are constantly checked by that society in which it will verify your reasoning skills but he asked you i got you my thought. bachelor's i have reasoning skills which he's right, but, he but asked the problem you is you're contradicting you thought, your earlier answer he's he asked you if you thought everybody could be absolutely no, I don't think wrong everybody about everybody that's everything. not what i thought that's not what i asked okay, I said, sorry, can you be wrong about everything you claim to know everything okay. that, here's <laughs> the key is, word can you no, be wrong about everything i think everyone can have a possibility but I have been Look, verified by the society by getting my bachelor's. This is it. This so this I is no longer not. this is no longer interesting. I told you this is where it would I just go. Never done this Cy, I have to tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think you're a bad guy. I yeah. think you know, I that think that you and I could have a better exchange than Aaron uh, jumping in all the time because you seem to understand the argument better than he does. So I would it love to do that even if it's not recorded with you sometime. Well, that, because that, Aaron, he just wants to come in and, and talk over. Well, it. look, we, we all have different. Not understand the well, we all have different personalities, and, and we all have different. Did it for a while. And we all have different I ways mean. of dealing with things. And and Aaron's been dealing with this a lot longer than I have, and he has a lot shorter <laughs> uh, patient stick yeah. because he's heard these arguments. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I'll and I'll be <laughs> honest. I know that what typically happens with with an apologist is if you ask a question you know what our answers are going to be you've done yeah. this long enough right. to know you understand we're either going to go this right. way or we're going to go that way and you're prepared both ways so in the right. rare off chance that you get an answer that doesn't really fit you restate our answer back to us in a way that we didn't state it to make us fall into one of your okay. categories now and I that's what it becomes if a I've phrase done that, but what I'm what I'm really trying to do is expose the fact that your answer is absurd but it must be one of the two. Okay, so you're allowed you, to say, Sai, you're allowed to say that answer is absurd and here's why. But what you're not allowed to do okay. is to say, let me finish. What you're not allowed yeah. to do is to say, okay, since Aaron said if there was some other sort of reality, yada, yada, to make a point, you turn around and reword that to say, you just said our brains could be in a vat, therefore you're, you don't know what reality you're in. More importantly, you more importantly, more importantly, remember, I remember you hold on just a second, Sai, and I'm going to shut up. I mentioned to you the last few times that we had apologists on here that the argument that you're going to get from them, doesn't matter if they're presuppositionalists, doesn't matter what type of apologist they are, they will argue, they will actually argue that reality itself will be wrong before that they will admit that they are wrong. And that's what is he's that doing. Is that true? Is that true, Sai? He's arguing think? that reality, that we must believe that reality is wrong, that somehow reality itself can't be justified if we don't make their assumption. And that is exactly what he's arguing. Is, is, All do you of believe the apologists that, do this. Do you believe well, that, I'll state that clearly and I'll give you an answer. Okay, let me state it. If you saw absolute 100% demonstrable evidence that was proving the Bible to be not a book of revelation, to be actual, actually false, time machine, something amazing in that we could show demonstrable evidence that the Bible was not true. What would you say to that? That our evidence must somehow be wrong because the Bible has to be true? Or would you I then would say, say that I disagree with your premise? Because evidence wow. presupposes what? the truth of the Bible. So you would what? ignore you would ignore all all evidence if it no, meant I the don't Bible. Ignore evidence. No, I said you evidence would evidence must be true. So if you went back in time, like back to the future, and you saw the people writing the books and that they actually are all schizophrenics. You well, I, I'm saying, you, look, let me... No, answer the question, because that's clear. a good analogy. Yeah, I'm going to say, do you know how I know the Bible's true? Do you know how I know that could not happen? How? Oh. Because if it, if it could, you couldn't make sense of your question. <laughs> what? Because your question presupposes <laughs> the truth of Scripture. No, because you cannot, you no, cannot account doesn't. for truth or rationality without it. No, we, now, one thing I was going to ask you a question. What did I just tell you he would question. say? Yeah. He just said it. Then why yeah. isn't the Quran right? Thank just, you, Sai, I'd be happy to debate you if you're a Muslim. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, so I'll be happy to go through that with you. All right, Sai, so maybe we can have another discussion someday. Okay, in a time, let me answer that, that question. No, quite. well, because I don't. I, I think what you're. I think it's pretty obvious that when you have to grasp these far-reaching levels of truth and abs and trying to trap Rachel in a yes or no question, it's obvious that you're grasping at these ridiculous strategies because you don't really have the truth. You have a well, faith claim. You have claim. to call them ridiculous because they're fundamental. But you have a time machine. Reasoning. You go see it's fake. You have a faith claim, Sai. Si. Just admit machine. that you have faith, not knowledge, and we're done with this. No, no, no. Faith. I, are you saying that it's impossible for God to give us knowledge? Why do I have to assume that a God... It is possible. Nothing, nothing is no. possible now, one of the until you, you can either. I cannot mischaracterize what Aaron said. That's correct, right? 
you said, you know, you can restate it, but you cannot let, mischaracterize let it. Let me Would explain something that that? from her yes. perspective so that you can adequately understand it. From the perspective of a scientist, a scientist does not get to say that anything is possible. A scientist Why can, not? Because there are things that are impossible. A scientist can. Why, why can't he say that? By what standard can he not say Because we that? have laws of physics. Now, and, and miracles are defined as defying the laws of physics, which means that miracles are physically impossible by definition. <laughs> now, according to well, a scientist. Miracles sci are impossible because they're miraculous. That's brilliant. That is the way they're defined. I'm sorry. Now, miracles for are impossible because they're miraculous. Because Brilliant they defy guys. the laws of physics. Guys, every time this you two talk to each live other, live every time you two talk so to each other, we branch to off into finish, 15 different directions. Right now, because it's all diffraction, that's what he's got to do. To explain, Rachel, as a scientist, cannot say that X is possible until she can show a precedent or a parallel indicating that it is possible, or if she can show verifiable truth that X happened anyway, regardless whether we can explain it. These are the rules of science. And you why assume that why a concept must be followed, is Aaron? true. I mean, it's like what Frank Zindler was saying. You have to accept the definition of a religion, like what a god is. Or if I say, well, is Zuchabara impossible? If you don't know what that is, is it an essence? Is it something that's not a god? Okay, to get back to answer, answer your then. question, so to you answer your then. question, when you said why do the laws of why do the rules of science have to be followed? Because in science, only accurate information has practical application, and accountability is paramount. And there's you no reason. The to ask it's you not begging the impossible. question. Truth, sure truth, accuracy, and accountability matter. I know they don't in your world, but Let they do in question. ours. On what basis do you assume that the laws of science are going to apply five seconds from now? On what basis would we assume they do not? How could we okay. assume they do Thanks not? Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks how, how is it possible that they could not? Simple question, Aaron. It is a simple question. On what basis and you're do you dodging assume it? that? So you're saying that the future will be like the past because it's been like that in the past. If you don't see a problem with that, then there's no point in continuing. Again, reality has question. to be wrong, and that's your defense. Reality itself no, is I'm wrong, not but that. not you. I'm asking you, on what basis do you assume that the laws of science are going to apply in five seconds? What if I said whatever you want me to say? Go to the next step, real quick. No. Then what? <laughs> we don't listen to this quote. The fact is that he cannot. He's listen to this quote. Like then the then Let's what? listen to this because quote. Like Let's listen to this quote from Scott D. Watsonheifer. Debating creationists on the topic of evolution is rather like trying to play chess with a pigeon. It knocks the pieces over, craps all over the board, and then flies back to its flock to claim victory. Mm -hmm. You're making up your own rules to whatever logic, definitions anyone has of knowledge or reason. You're making it all up by introducing magic and then laughing as though you have the ultimate answers to everything and we're all wrong. And that is a very arrogant position to take, Sam. And again, you Why said, well, how do you... Wrong? Why would arrogance because be wrong if you that just was the said, case? You just said, how do you know in five seconds that reality won't be wrong? That's the argument. You have the argument that reality itself is wrong. That five seconds from now, the laws of <laughs> physics won't How fit does this anymore. All equal Jesus? I don't That's understand. not my claim, Aaron. It I'm doesn't. saying that I and know. And what is magic again? Magic is when reality is wrong, isn't it? And that's what you. So how do you know that the, that science won't change in five seconds? How do you know what that? What if again? I don't know? Then what? That's what if right. I don't you know? don't. But you assume no, it I'm because you don't. No, don't. No, no. She says, no. "What if?" I'm, I'm playing the game. She's playing the game if with I'm being you. A person. What if? What if I don't? What if I say I don't know? Then okay. The the point is. In because science, you it cannot, matters. without assuming God, when you do that, it exposes your pre-commitment to God. Okay, well, say that again. The fact that when what? you when you like when you do science, when you think rationally, when you do all of these things, you do that based on the truth of my worldview. Because you cannot justify that the laws of science will apply five seconds from now. When you assume that they do, you assume my worldview. Except that we don't. We did exactly the opposite. No, and we just I, explained that to you. I yeah, but the thing is, I ask, how do you know it will apply in five seconds? And you have no answer. You say it's I always do like have. That. I That's do have an question. answer. I do have we, an answer. Reality that. isn't wrong. Reality is real. How do you know it won't change? How do you know reality won't change in five seconds? Yeah, how do we know that a unicorn's not going to come out of my ass and fly me to right. the next game? How do you know it's that ridiculous. in five seconds? How do you we know don't. That? It's ridiculous. Absurdity. Reality right. has to exactly. be wrong. Right. It's absurd. Just you are how arguing you know that? that reality is wrong. How do you know that reality can't change is my question. Because Why does it matter to even, reality to, uh, is to defined even talk about real. it? Reality is defined as real. And how do you know that it can't change so that such things that he described cannot happen in five seconds? Because we don't have a precedent or parallel to indicate that possibility. Oh, okay. Like I so just the future explained. will be like the past, based on the past. 
Thank you for we your have, time. I, that's not what I said. Okay, so you're doing it again. You're struggling. We don't have a precedent. Have because okay. it hasn't happened, it can't so happen. I, and because because accuracy here. and accountability matter, and when you state a thing, you have to be able to show that it is true. This is something you have failed to do in every one of your conversations. Sai, so so thank you so much for your time. Maybe we'll talk My again, pleasure. but we're going to have to My set pleasure. some ground rules. All right. Thank you. Take Good care. Time. All right, Good he's gone. setting ground rules with that guy. Yeah, so we're going to talk more in the after show about the idea of what just happened. But for now, we're getting the hell out of here.